Join me here today at one of the busiest day ticket fisheries in the country. We're at Linear Fisheries. You'd usually assume you're fishing out here with three rods on the spot, but I've invited Mike to come up today to have an insight to the fishing which I've been doing down the edge. It was the 68 fish I put back this morning, and that was 68 fish on one rod from this swim, unbelievably. Hopefully today we can touch up on a few tactics I've been using, the spots I'm looking to fish upon, as well as my bait application to extract these fish. The spots I'm looking for are ultimately the unorthodox spots. I usually bypass the popular swims in knowing that there's maybe bait being in there, people fishing them very hard. So ultimately I'm looking for areas where I can fish one rod. I like to find areas where the fish feel safe, little sanctuaries away from the pressure where I can apply myself quietly and ultimately move around on the fish if needs be. I'm never investing too much bait into these spots. I'll be very visual and open to when the fish are or aren't there and I will move on to them if totally necessary. Most of my spots up linear which I'm fishing in the edge and no further than a rod length or two out. This spot in particular, you've got a barrow pass to get up to one of the spits. It sees a lot of footfall and people just turn a blind eye to it. It totally suits my fishing. I've got to jump in the water in my waders. It's a really tricky cast to get it up to the edge, but I think ultimately that puts people off of it. So it all started back in the spring when I found this pipe along this edge. Whether it had a slow trickle flow of water coming through or not, it was secluded by two big trees. After a slight bit of lead work, I was able to find a big crater and a change in depth right in front of the pipe, almost in the ideal area where I imagine the fish may have been feeding, flanking, but certainly paying a lot of attention to. So the nature of the spot can be very tricky to cast, but with a few steps into the water with the waders, it enables you to change the angle of the cast and you can get tight into the trees. been reassured by the bailiffs and the fishery management team that the snags are all fended underneath so you can see the overhanging trees but it's only the canopy there is not actually much danger at all under the trees which enables you to fish safely. I could almost assure when I get a cast right into this gully in between the two trees and in front of the pipe it's almost a bite of chuck. I've got a fish in the net which went off two minutes ago which Mike managed to capture the take and you'll see by the nature of the take is absolutely savage. They do not think they are getting caught from these areas. So I think I'm catching these fish off guard from the marginal edges is they, they're not seeing bait in these areas. They're used to seeing them on top of the bars, amongst the weed, in the silt, just very rarely in the edge and by doing so, especially with the goodies which I'm offering the fish, it provokes a feeding, a feeding frenzy which the fish are almost very respondent to anything which comes in. They're in almost a disbelief that they're going to get caught from these areas. They feel so safe, it's a sanctuary, nobody wants to put the pressure on them and it totally suits me. I will keep pushing that repeat button until I ultimately caught my target. Let's give you a little bit of an insight into my tactics which I've been fishing. It's been 99% solid bag fishing this year. Um, it's solid bags with a twist. The way that I construct them, a few of the components I use are probably a bit unorthodox compared to what you'd usually use. So what I believe, the way I fill my solid bags are the hook bait goes into the bottom. I like to use the lighter powders and crumb into the bottom. I would then use heavy liquid to help activate the crumb and get it up and down through the water column. After doing so, I begin to add edge pellet alongside Atlantic heat pellet crushed in all sizes. I'll then add some oil to the pellets well, before putting in some boily crumb with my crushed tiger nuts. The boily crumb consists of Royal Marine and Cremino. To top it off, we'll put some pellets on top with a few grains of sweet corn. Religiously, it's usually free because everything happens in threes. 
The reason I put the lighter items at the bottom of the bag is to help the lead at the top of the bag sit down on the bottom and the air is going to escape the top. I puncture some holes directly where my hook bait is at the bottom of the bag and this will always enable the lead to sit on the bottom and the bottom end of the bag to sit up to release bubbles which are also the marker for me to run down my margin to bait directly over the top. So I'm about to cast this bag down the margin tight to the tree line. It's going to enable me with the contents of the bag, with all the liquids carrying up to the top, I'm going to be able to hop out of the water, run down with some bait, and I'm going to be able to feed the area directly over to where my solid bag and the contents are going to rise up to the surface. Let's get the rod in there now. So you see me just make the cast, I can see the bubbles from my bag rising up, bringing all the lighter items from the bag up to the top. I'm now going to spread some bait over the top. So that's the bag and rig tactics. As bait application goes, it's very simple. It's a very similar mix to what my boily crumb and my bag mix is in total. Maybe there's a few bigger morsels of bait, but that's to help me get a spread. Ultimately, when I come down and I see the bubbles come up from my spot where I'm targeting to bait, I'm always baiting the other side of my line and I'm ensuring that I may be spreading the bait around the bivy size area to keep the fish grubbing in the area rather than pinpoint on one exact area. Baiting like this also helps with rig mechanics, just in the nature of the fish rummaging around in the swim and where I'm using short, short, sharp rigs. If the fish makes the error to pick up my rig and he uprights himself, the game is totally over. So that's an insight to my approach up linears. I hope that I inspire you to, even if the lake's busy, I turn up when it's very busy, you can turn up to the lake and you can find opportunities, mostly in the margins and the ne neglected swims. The one rod approach has done me amazingly well this year and there's opportunities all around the lake to be had. If you're willing to put the effort, you're going to get the rewards. Ultimately back in 2020, I set myself an unreal target, a ridiculous target at the Hardwick Common. There's 1,500 odd fish in here and I was going to have to play the numbers game. The one rod approach came in clutch in this situation. Fished this swim since the beginning of April and um, it was now what, the end of September, I pre-baited, I baited for about three or four hours just to prime the swim before I put a rod in to test the waters. I put a rod in in 15 minutes with the rod being in the water. We only went and got the one we wanted from the lake, didn't we? Just under 42 pounds of prime Oxfordshire common carp and the one what people want from Hardwick. And that was job done.